paano kaya po matitipig ang USDC? USDT? BUSD? Ano ang mangyayari, Kamiranda? Mawawala pa lahat ang pera mo? Samahan niyo ako, pag natin kung bakit nga ba natitipig ang mga stablecoins sa ating video today, Kamiranda. Maaaring narinig mo na ang nangyari noong 2022 na natipeg ang UST Luna at nag-cost ng pagpagsak ng isa sa mga pinakamalaking cryptocurrency sa taon ng 2022. Dahil ito sa pagdipeg ng USD with the Luna Currency. Pero ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng dipeg? Ano nga ba ang stablecoins, Kamiranda? Ang stablecoins ay cryptocurrency na nag-a-attempt na ipeg ang kanilang market value sa isang external na reference. Ginagawa ito ng merkado dahil hindi volatile ang mga stablecoins dahil ito ay nakapeg o nakatuon ng kanilang value according sa takbo ng isang dollar na karaniwang ginagamit na pang peg or denominator sa mga stablecoins. Pwede rin gamitin gold or any other commodities to be able to peg a particular currency. Ano nga ba ang iba't iba mga factor na nagkukos ng pagtipeg ng mga stablecoins kami Miranda, pag-usapan natin. Unang-una, algorithmic failure. May mga stablecoin na dinesign hindi sa regular peg model pero ito ay naka-algorithmic by design. In the case of Terra Luna and Terra USD or UST, yung regular crypto and stablecoin pegged into a US dollar, minimaintain nila ang kanilang presyo towards each other through a burn and mint balance. If UST supply began to exceed the number of dollars a little too much, some of it will be burnt. Pero, if it fell below the dollar too much, some Luna will be burnt. Additionally, bagong Luna will be minted by a burning of UST. Itong system controlled supply and demand na ito ay base sa algorithmic stablecoin design ng Terra Luna and Terra USD. Ginawa ito to make sure that neither of the factors can outweigh each other. Pero, sabihin natin for example, one of the assets will have to suffer a monumental drop in demand. For example, noong May 2021, si Anchor Protocol nag-allow siya ng users to deposit their UST, yung stablecoin ni Luna, for rewards. Ang ginawa nila, they decided to drop the yield from an incredible 20% to 4%. Dahil dito, yung mga investors no longer see a reason to drop or to keep the deposits with the protocol. Tapos, dahil to nagwithdraw sila ng USD and sold it off. Yung algorithm hindi niya kinaya dahil nagbentahan yung malalaking investors at depositors ng USD, kinonvert lang nila into into dollar, bumigay yung algorithmic stable coins. Terra Labs, the owners of Luna and USD could not do anything to mitigate the huge drop in demand for USD. The company ran out of Luna to burn and make up for the price drop which sealed the fate for both cryptocurrencies. Number 2, lack of over collateral Collateralization. Ang mga stable coins, kailangan nilang maging over-collateralized to maintain their peg, even of tougher market circumstances. Ang ibig sabihin ng over-collateralization is anyone who wishes to loan against the stable coin in question, they must deposit an excess of the collateral. For example, merong isang trader na gustong umutang ng $50 sa isang platform. Depending on the collateral ratio, they may have to deposit $100 or $150 para na makautang ng $50 or even more in another crypto depending on the platform requirement. For example, sa MakerDAO protocol, para maintindihan natin, halimbawa, merong nagbabarrow ng DAI or DAI stablecoin which is actually pegged to the dollar as a potential borrowed asset. For example, magbabarrow ka ng 100 DAI tokens. So, si MakerDAO, kailangan niya ng over-collateralization ng 150%. So, for every dollar worth of DAI borrowed, you need to deposit a dollar and fifty cents of another crypto to be able to proceed with the transaction. Pwede mo rin ilagay na another crypto collateral can be Ethereum or Chainlink basta worth one dollar and fifty cents. Keeping the DAI stablecoin over collateralized in this way lowers the chance of DAI losing its spec. Tapat ganito ngayon ang ginagawa ng mga crypto founders to make sure na kahit magkaroon ng market volatility, hindi basta-basta madidipeg ang presyo ng kanila mga stablecoins. But what if 
Alpha stablecoin was not over collateralized and the market hit a rough spot. This is where the problem can start coming in. Let's say the demand for DAI decreased significantly and it dropped below a dollar but was not over collateralized. Let's go extreme and say DAI had no collateral at all. If it suffered a significant price drop, MakerDAO would have no way of redeeming the DAI value or compensating its investors. In short, it's gonna be a very bad news for everyone. Pangatlo kamerada, tinatawag natin market ripple effect. Confidence and trust are feelings that crypto investors often struggle to maintain. Hindi mo sila pwedeng sisihin doon dahil everything else depends on trust. The crypto market is so volatile that investors must always be aware of what's happening to avoid losing huge amounts of money. Pero yung lack of trust na ito can also cause huge market crashes. Yung example kanina about Luna in USD disaster, para mas maunawaan natin, nung bumagsak yung dalawang cryptocurrency which is your numerator Luna, denominator USD, kung sila ay bumagsak dahil sa pagbaba ng demand, the rest of the crypto industry began to get cold feet. Things were looking very precarious as the US Federal Reserve decided to increase interest rates, causing people to either sell their crypto or not buy at all to be risk averse. Pero nung bumigay si Luna and USD, things went from bad to worse. Investors got nervous. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Solana, and Cardano, and thousands of other cryptocurrencies took a hit, many of them losing massive chunks of value. Tether, for example, the market's most popular stablecoin, could not escape the crash and would wobble significantly. Noong May 11 and 12 of 2022, Tether's price fell below 0.0995. Pwedeng sabihin natin minuscule ito, pero the dollar peg stablecoin are designed to remain at 0.999 to 1.001 region. So, if that happened na lumabas ito sa kanyang current peg ratio, it could be a very very bad news. Pero hindi ito isolated case kameranda. Noong November 2022, FTX, a well-known crypto exchange, filed for bankruptcy. At this time, many customers began thinking withdrawals due to the lack of trust in the platform, fueled by the exchange's rumored solvency issue. At that time, yung CEO ng FTX na si Sam Bankman Freed admitted that the company didn't have enough stored on its reserves to tackle such scenario. It's actually too late and people saw another crypto failure and got nervous. Amid the crypto wobble, Tether again dropped to 0.98 due to the lack of faith from investors. At this point, it was assumed by many that the stablecoin would lose its peg. This ended up happening and Tether even managed to drop at 0.97 but only briefly, the stablecoin recovered and sits at 0.9996 at the time of writing. Ayan, sana ka Miranda, alam mo na lahat ng mga factors na nag affect ng cryptocurrency, DPEG ng mga stablecoins. At this point in time, I will encourage you to ensure na i-diversify mo ang iyong mga assets. Iwahiwalay mo, wag lang sa isang stablecoin, but you can also try all different stablecoins na meron tayo sa Mercado today. Just be mindful that cryptocurrency is a very volatile and very, very risky investment. So always make sure if you risk on your own appetite. Maraming salamat ka Miranda, and I love you 3,000. Subscribe, like, follow, and share. Sige na please, Kamiranda.